We're on the north side of our studio gardens where we're trying to establish different types of trees in our drive around. And some of our trees are pines. And we're having a few problems with some of our pines like you might be at home as well. And a lot of times during this time of year in the fall, people will start to notice yellow leaves on the insides of the branches of the pines like we're seeing here. And those yellow needles will start dropping off and people will call into their office wondering what's going on. And that's just a normal process. Those are older needles that normally drop off sometimes every couple of years. So as long as they're on the inside, it's really nothing to worry about. But there is one problem that we're finding on ours that is concerning us a little bit. And some of those symptoms are the ends of the branches or the twigs are starting to die back. And you see a little bit of resin or sap as well as some webbing that shows up. And the insect that is causing this damage is the pine tip moth. And the pine tip moth is actually a problem more on pines that have two needles in a bundle. And the way to check that is just to pull off some of the needles and usually you'll get a bundle of them and there may be two or three needles in that bundle. And in home situations it's usually more scotch pine or mugo pine. But in a commercial setting like in Christmas tree operations, you'll see this problem and you'll see some of the footage as well. The adults will actually hatch out uh, in the month of February. They lay their eggs then around March and as the egg hatches, the larva stage will then bore into the end of the twig or branch and it's feeding on the end of that branch or twig. And what happens, that stops the growth and causes it to branch out and maybe stunts the tree even. And that can be a problem if it happens on each one of them where you don't get much growth. It'd be just like tip pruning each of the branches. Now the controls would be any time from the month of March through, say, September, you'll want to use um, an insecticide like dimethoate or orthene on a 20-day schedule. And this will hopefully get the timing of the larva where it won't penetrate the end of the branch and, and kill it out. So it's just an insecticidal spray that you would spray on the tree to get good coverage to try to kill those larvae. Now the next thing to do is to try to put an application of a systemic on this time of year during the month of November. And I've got a couple down here that I want to show you and talk about. Research has shown that disiston, which is a systemic, the 15% is actually the best thing that you can use during this time of year. And how you would apply it is by broadcasting it under the drip line of the tree and then watering it in. But the thing I need to caution you on is disiston comes in two formulations. The 15% that is recommended by the research is actually uh, restricted use and can only be purchased by someone with a pesticide license. And this danger poison or the skull and crossbones is how you know it's restricted. And up here you'll see restricted use pesticide. So you may go into your farm store and see this uh, sitting on the shelf, but unless you have a pesticide license, you're not able to buy this. Only people with those licenses, such as a lawn maintenance company or someone who has been tested on that. Now you as a homeowner can buy one that is a 2% solution. However, the research shows that this doesn't work quite as well as the 15%. And a lot of us may get the idea that we can put on seven times this amount to get our 15% and we'd be able to come up with the same re results. But you have to go by the label on this pesticide and it says one to one and a half pounds per tree. So you've got to go by the label. If you increase it, you'll actually be breaking the law. But again, you may want to hire someone to come in and put this on if it's a severe problem with your trees. Now an alternative to pesticides might be to just keep in mind good cultural practices or grow a variety such as longleaf or slash pine, which seems to be more tolerant of the uh, pine tip moth. And the other best thing would be to prune to get that damage out of there and dispose of those prunings to try to kill the uh, insect out. So remember, if you have a severe problem, November is the time of month to have this uh, pesticide put on your tree. 
We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.